How you doing, sir? All right, all right. Bless you, bro. So tell me about this organization right here. So this, we are Faith in New Jersey. Uh, we are a multicultural, multi-faith organization <laughs> whose mission is to develop okay. everyday grassroots Brothers and sisters, just to organize their community. Talina, to uh, let's give it up. build uh, what we call a beloved community that all our families and friends will thrive. Uh, we are uh, well known throughout the state of New Jersey. Uh, we are with or in 21 counties of New Jersey. Uh, we are in Puerto Rico, we're in Rwanda, we're in Haiti, and we are still moving forward to make sure people have what they need and that they're not given what people want them to have. So we are uh, in Paris. Uh, we have a meeting on, uh, our next meeting is September 12th at Grace of God Church, 20 Belmont Ave. Come on out, let's hear your voice. Be a part of this movement to make sure our families thrive and our families get what they deserve and not what people want to get. Okay, so how can uh, the people all around the world could contact this organization? They can go to our website. We are in uh, our Facebook page is Faith in New Jersey. Just as it sounds, Faith in New Jersey. Look us up on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We also have our, our page on Instagram called The Real New Jersey. You can look at The Real New Jersey. Or Instagram also, Faith in New Jersey. Or on Facebook, Faith in New Jersey. Read about us. We've been doing this now for 50 years. Okay. All right? Okay, thank you. I black men because it's between my black son's life and the life of his white friend is too big. I'm going to need 10,000 safety is an illusion if you have one drop of sweet African blood coursing through your veins where you have to die a little just to keep saying, I'm going to need 10,000 fearless black men because where the schools, there is a place to practice domestic terrorism. The little black girls get slammed to the floor in their desk or to the ground in their swimsuits or rent at gunpoint by the boys in blue who are the boys in white sheets too. They're the same as their plantation owning fathers taking and raping and then selling us milk and seed and making sure that we can't read the signs that tell us this land is not for you and me. And every time we venture on that ribbon of highway, there's a chance we'll commit suicide in police custody, leaving our black family to pretend that we are not hurting when we go out into the world, or when we arrive at school, study, do our homework, we report to our jobs and work, we go to the gym and work out as if we are not in the midst of a civil war. I'm going to need 10,000 fearless black men. I'm gonna need 10,000 fearless black men because it's like, if we do a good job, finish our homework, get in a few more reps or steps or whatever, that may be something marvelous, magnificent, magical will happen and that's a fire. Good Lord, it's a fire. As I was saying, I'm gonna need 10,000 fearless black men to stomp out fires. Um, maybe something marvelous, magical, miraculous, magic will happen and cops will stop killing our babies and our sisters and our brothers and we'll stop killing each other while emulating our oppressor, causing us to fight a war on two fronts, one with our own people and one with systemic racism. I'm going to need 10,000 fearless black men. I'm going to need 10,000 fearless black men because I am tired of hashtags. Hashtag his name, hashtag justice, hashtag same old stuff, hashtag administrative leave, hashtag man not again, hashtag next weekend's friend, hashtag how long will it be before hashtag me, hashtag it's just math now, hashtag change y'all, hashtag I cry in blood now, hashtag the river is full y'all, hashtag God why do they hate us so, hashtag peace, hashtag bare arms, hashtag give me free, hashtag black is beautiful, hashtag beware of the enemy, hashtag y'all better look out for the frenemy, hashtag acquit it, hashtag the thug story is a lie, Hashtag every 28 hours in Chicago. Hashtag bullets are the new tree limbs. Hashtag choke to death. 
Hashtag shot. Hashtag record was driving. Hashtag hammer fist to the face, y'all. He was in the wheelchair. Hashtag how, the, what does his criminal history have to do with it? Hashtag elders killed at home. Hashtag stairway. Hashtag millions of tax payers dollars. Hashtag turn their backs to the mayor. Hashtag civil war. Hashtag hoodie. Hashtag headline. Hashtag grand jury. Hashtag no reason to indict. Hashtag no wrongdoing. Hashtag under investigation. Hashtag outrage. Hashtag peaceful protest. Hashtag, 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 hashtag them. Hashtag, hashtag what the what. Hashtag black lives matter. Hashtag don't ruin the hashtag. Hashtag life insurance. Hashtag Oregon trafficking. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag justice for his name. Hashtag justice for her name. Hashtag gender is irrelevant. Hashtag can't be black on college campuses. Hashtag can't be black while walking. Hashtag can't be black and have an Arizona iced tea and a Skittle. Hashtag Air Jordan. Hashtag close the opportunity gap. Hashtag I'm gonna need 10,000 fearless black men because the space between my black son's life and the life of his white friend is just too big. Thank y'all. And we are doing for my sisters. I am afraid to tell you how happy I am. I am afraid to say that I am doing well. I am afraid that when you ask me how things are going, that if I tell the truth that I am blessed and highly favored, that you will accuse me of bragging. Maybe you love pain, but I don't. When I say that the kids are doing well, that we have a great relationship, that they are responsible, amazing, citizens who love their mother respectfully and they just call to say hiya that you will think that my truth is false so I just say they're okay I am afraid that if I am honest with you you won't know what to do maybe you like pain I am afraid that if you know everything there is to know about me that you will not remember how very hard how how i'm sorry that you will not remember all of the very hard work it takes to accomplish something before it gets noticed that you will say congratulations but you will feel a pain in your chest one that isn't good for either of us i am afraid that you will think that i am too much or Maybe my something and someone excludes you. Maybe you love pain. I am editing this on the spot. I am afraid that if I apply, that I might get accepted. I am afraid that when God, I am afraid that when I speak the words that God has asked me, required me to say that you won't know that I am fulfilling my purpose and that you will think that I am too much and you won't hear the message. You won't accept that the message is for somebody somewhere even if that somewhere is not here and that someone is not you. I am afraid that speaking the truth is sometimes considered a way to diminish someone else's power. Maybe you love pain. I am afraid that you don't know how amazing you are, that you see competition when you see, should see collaboration. I am afraid that you might need to dim lights in order to shine yourself. I am afraid that you don't know that what is for you is for you, and that what is for me is for me. I am afraid of taking a chance on your joy, but I'll do it anyway. Maybe you love pain but I don't, so I won't let you convince me that I am too much. All right, that's the truncated version of that. I appreciate y'all, I'm looking at the brother Sadiq, he's looking away like he don't want me to step away. Um, continuing to have a place for an open mic and artists to come, I'm, and I was away for a long time, and when I came back, I was like, I'm gonna do some open mics, but I saw that the brother Sadiq was already doing it. 
And so I made a decision, I'm just gonna go play with him. I'm gonna come to his spot and do the work because that's what black people should be doing, exactly what you all are doing right now, um, which is being in unity and supporting each other. So I thank you, brother, for doing what you've been doing for so long and so well. Um, you have my deepest bow. And I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna read something else for you. Is that all right? Can I read you another poem? Sure. But that's good. Thank you for saying yes. I appreciate it. I just want to make sure. You look so good. Brothers, you look so good in your afros, your brand new twists, your dreadlocks, your fresh cuts, your braids, your mustache, your goatee, and your leather ball heads. You look so good in your baggy jeans, your Tims, your blazers, your bow ties, your fatigues, your cotton tees, your dashiki, your koofy, your tailored pants, your silk shirt. You look so good in your team jersey and your starter cap. You look so good, and I think it's sexy when you bite your bottom lip, you stroke your chin, you raise your eyebrow, you put your thumb in your belt loop, you suck your out toys, you only wear one ear, your headphones, you like to rub your diamond stud. You look so good. And I admit I'm flattered by your corny pickup lines, your straightforwardness, your quiet respect, your let's just do this style. You look so good. And I know it's hard to be a man and I envy you not. You gotta support the ladies and teach the babies and raise the nation and carry on the heritage and set the standard and avoid the authorities because you fit the description. But baby, you look so good. All right, that's what my brother said. I hope you saw yourself in there because you look so good. Brown girl, you don't have to cry no more. No. Today, the eyes looking at you will judge you for the color of your heart, no matter the color of the eyes. Your grandmother and her grandmother knew nothing of the skin-free joys of your life. Every single walking step for them tested their spirit. They prayed that the pressure is would take their hand, lead them on, let them stand. They were tired. They were weak sometimes, true, but they persevered, brown girl, for you. Yes, you're still a babe now, not far removed from the suckle of your mother, but white years from the mulatto, nappy, second-class citizen labels of your foremothers. Now, you are a girl, simply, free to play, to dream, to sing, to inspire, to be whomever you decide, brown girl. You don't have to cry no more, no. You leave your eyes clear to see the way through the fights of your generation. We have left much work for you to do. Leave your mind clear to find the ways that we did not know needed changing. Leave your heart free to soar beyond the stratosphere and discover worlds that we dare not dream about. Leave your anger alone. Replace it with the triumphs of a two-century-year-old war that your foremothers fought for you to be free of tears, brown girl. You don't have to cry no more, no. Celebrate your skin, your hair, your hips, your waist. Hold your head up high. Wear your smile wide and let your eyes glisten, brown girl. You don't have to cry no more, no. Thank y'all. Put your phone. Put in your calendar. October 1. I'm going to definitely be there. I'm going to be there. Please pick them up. Keep your eye on these kids because they're really cutting up. Hey, come here. Hey, y'all. I need that hand. My guinea pig. You got a guy on the way. You know, I don't know who the young brother is moving around. But that's why. Security is very important. You know, um, we need somebody to uh, keep the eye on the jump house. Okay. Keep your eyes on these kids. Okay? If you put your hands up, so, you get now. Let me help. 
liberate and finance our own freedom. Now, this piece I want to share with you is based on some of the ideas that I may have had and I have gotten from scholars, you know, people like uh, Dr. Claude Anderson, people like Attorneys, Economic Globalization. And this is just some of the ideas that I, I came up with when I'm actually Powernomic Democracy. Better ways to build wealth, to live it ever and die free. Spiritually, physically, mentally, and economically. Now I'm gonna break that one down properly. Changing your frame. Going from knowledge to a wise dome. I mean changing your brain. To a greater understanding of how to build wealth. Building for the family, community, and self. Collective participation for true powernomics. Being a prosumer with democracy and economics. Controlling your own materials and cultures. In the robbery of your capital from the claws of these vultures. You don't have to go at it alone. Don't be a loner. Everybody can't be a boss, but they can be an owner. Ownership and the assets in which your lives depend on. Stocks in the companies whose products you spend on. Settling the scores with new business accords. Unionized labor co-chairing the boards. Workers cooperatives, no plantation operatives or systems. No more dead peasant victims. See, this economy abandons us, subjects and strands us. So let's buy back the blocks with community land trusts. <laughs> community gardens and community farms. Food to the people to fix community harms. Let's explore UBI, universal basic income. To level, to level the discrepancies as long-term investments, not short-term discrepancies. Let's create family clubs of investments. And it could be one of the ways for reparations assessments. But for all layers of wealth, we must protect what life needs. Global sustainability, rejuvenation of seeds. Not for corporate greed, but for life itself to succeed. Because there's room for all of us, and all of us can achieve wealth. I'm good for one more, Brother Sadiq? Yes, sir. Go ahead. All right. This one actually is going to be on my next, uh, my next project. I want to share it with you all. African Americans, Caribbean Blacks, Latinos, anywhere where we were dispersed around this globe is the African diaspora. That's right. Building that connection. And that's what inspired this piece, which is aptly entitled, The Pride of My Roots. Let's bridge this historical connection. From Kush to the Americas, we are the exception. We rule lands and we push the world's culture. From Pharaoh to Obama to Zamunda and Wakanda. Civilization's covenant is in our honor. Best way to describe us is Holocaust survivors. Though we came before Columbus and his pipe dreams, we've been dealing with a high scheme since 1619. We've been forsaken, though we built the nation. We built these Americas in these concentrations. Though we were taken and kidnapped into enslavement, we came from empires, tribes, and nations. Like Ghana and Mali, and the Igbo and Maasai, Fulani and Wala, Kanem and Songhai, Mendigo and Medica, the Mendi and Manika, the Awe and the Ashanti, Benin and Aruba, and my maternal ancestors from the land of the Yoruba. Now, Without further ado, I write this letter to you. Dear world, there is no sense in hiding the truth. I write this letter from the pride of my roots. It's a time for new hope, a time for real talk. No more black bodies outlined in chalk. The disconnection of true knowledge can further oppression. But the rise of the original family is in session. Brothers like Dr. King helping us have a dream by any means necessary, Malcolm's main theme. 
laying foundations like Cush and Kemet. Because rooted in our blood is civilization's covenant. To my ebony women, original mothers of earth. I know they still kick you to the dirt. Though your true essence may remain unseen, at the million more movement I saw nothing but queens. Mm. And the legacy is there and it remains in your hearts. From queens like Nefertiti to Rosa L. Parks. Trailblazing the victory, children of destiny. Fist raised high up, the salute for equity. And look in your souls, because it is there you'll see the truth. Sincerely yours, your brother, from the pride of my roots. Your young brother, brother Jack. Well, this is, this is our future right here, all right? We gotta keep an eye on him, make sure he's all right, all right? All right, so we're going to call our sister up. Right, brother? Yeah. All right. We're going to call our brother sister Asana to come out and do a poem. No. <laughs> Uh, brothers and sisters. He's a brother that's been ministering for a very long time. He's, he's an activist. And he's a very good brother. Every time I see this brother, I just get a beautiful, beautiful vibe for him. Let's give it up to our dear good brother, Brother Moody. Yeah. Peace and blessings, Patterson. Man, it's great to be out here today. Um, thank you for the opportunity and the call, uh, Brother Imam and this opportunity just to share. Sister Wahida, it's great to see you, my neighbor. Um, I grew up with her children, and it's just great to be out here in the community. And I believe that the seeds that are being sown today, they're going to help those who are listening at different points in time. We don't always see everyone that's listening, but we, all, we must always know that someone is always watching. Someone is always watching. Someone is always watching. And so the Bible says that, um, and I heard someone say it earlier, that you reap what you sow, that you reap what you sow. So be not weary in well-doing, in doing good, and sowing those good seeds, knowing that you shall reap if you faint not. Regardless of you know where you live, whether you're in the hood, whether you're in the inner city, or whether you're in the suburbs. That principle is something that crosses all cultural, ethnic, and economic lines. You reap what you sow. And so what we're seeing here today in our community is good seeds being sown into our community so that good seeds, uh, when they, when they uh, mature, they'll come back and sow the seeds into the next generation. So shout out to everybody that's involved, all of the poets, all of the speakers that's spreading love, that's spreading joy, that's spreading peace in our communities. Yo, we need that. Regardless of the less than 1% of the negative information that's being pumped in our, into our communities, that's dominating the media, let's continue to sow good seeds. Shout out to all of the educators that see the gifts in our children. Shout out to uh, the pastors, to the imams in our community that see the good in this next generation. Shout out to the parents Shout out to the family members that see the good in our community and that don't mind having those tough conversations with our young people that's being distracted by what's going on in our communities. Shout out to everyone that is sowing that, those good seeds. Just know as you sow those good seeds into our community that they are going to reap a good harvest in our community. We can't stop sowing, we can't stop doing good, especially to those who we see great potential in their lives. There are too many of them dying with great potential still left in them. So let's not be afraid to snatch them up, pull them to the side, and disrupt that negative thinking and that impoverished thinking and disrupt that, that, um, that negative behavior so that we can sow those good seeds and change that behavior and change that thinking so that they can be all that God has called them to be. So thank you for this opportunity. Today I am representing the NAACP Patterson chapter. Um, there are a lot of good things that are happening in our community. Let's continue to have conversations and find out what's happening. On September 7th, those that are watching, 
um, Deacon Elvis Page, Brother Elvis Page, those that are watching, September 7th, we're calling all the brothers in our community. We're calling all of the brothers in our community to welcome our youth back to school. You can get in contact with me via social media, Facebook, jae.moody12. You can inbox me on September 7th. I need brothers, I need the men all throughout our city at the different schools. There are some schools where people have already committed to meet. We're meeting at 8 a.m. Uh, there are, again, there are several schools that are involved where the men are gonna be. We want to be united with you. We want to welcome our children back in school. Listen, your presence is needed. Your presence is needed. We need as many brothers active in our community to show light and to show love to our young people. Let them know that we love them. So thank you again for this time. All my brothers, hope to see you on September 7th. And to my sisters in the community, again, continue to hold it down, continue to sow seeds. Uh, pray, let's pray for one another and let's uplift one another. God bless. Hey, what's going on? You like that, right? You know, you can play some music so everybody can relax. And we got some more poets and MCs coming through, all right? So continue to relax. Uh, keep the eyes on the babies. Keep the eyes on the house jump. If you want to jump in the shower, spread the love of So thank y'all for coming out. Appreciate it. We love y'all. And we'll be back. All right, DJ, y'all see us on you. When they see you on Furia, do not believe you on this. Resist. When they see they need millions of dollars to build bombs instead of build schools on your rise, resist. When they say they want to return our will, they knock down your door and say that they are taking your land in the name of eminent domain. This is not fair. Resist. When they pit a people against a people and a nation against a nation in the name of world domination, resist. Speak truth to power. Do not comply. Do not believe, do not accept, do not be afraid, do not surrender, do not judge. Do not bear false witnesses against our neighbor. When they create unjust laws to repress, oppress and suppress, higher learning for our young black minds resist. When they conquer third worlds in the name of national security and steal their natural resources, resist. Believe, do not accept, do not be afraid. Do